Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode. My name is Dana, I will be your host, and my guest today is Albert Whale. Hello, Albert, how are you? Hi, Dana, I'm great. It's a little cold here in Pittsburgh and a little rainy too. It's rainy here too, very rainy and gross. So before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about what you do. Thank you. Uh, my name's Albert Whale, and I work in cybersecurity, have been since 9-11. Uh, recently got started in Zero Trust Architectures, and I'm a registered CMMC uh, practitioner, a, a CMMC RP. I'm also the author of the award-winning book, Hashtag Hacked, you see it there in the background, mm -hmm. and the second international best-selling book, Hashtag Hacked 2, wow. written with 12 additional cybersecurity professionals. These are great books that you should probably get. You can afford them, and they have great advice in them. Awesome. That's great. That is fantastic. Well, I'm definitely going to have to get my hands on a copy there. I'll have to start with the first one first and then obviously get to the second one. So that's well, fantastic. I have a separate link uh, that's not Amazon that I can get you a signed copy and, and or personalized if you like. Perfect. I would love the link. Love the link. And if you don't mind, then we'll put the link in the show notes. Oh, darn it. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we have a very interesting and exciting topic, <clears throat> scope and network diagrams, which is a very, very important topic. So our first question is going to be, so what does scope mean in a CMMC assessment? Good question. Scope is what areas inside the organization have access to CUI or classified data? So when you have a government contract, Certainly you don't want the people at the front desk having access to confidential information. They may or may not have a clearance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Depending on your company and whatnot, they may not have access or need access. That's the operative word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To that confidential information. So you want to organize your company with those that need to know and isolate their environments so that the scope of the assessment is minimized to control um, who has access, how are you doing this, um, how are your controls set up, uh, how's logging going for that, and how long have you been doing this, and is it effective? And, you know, I think that's an excellent point. That's also a very good business practice for people to use, not just for CMMC assessment, just for in general with having least privilege, making sure you're just giving people access to what they really need access to. There's a lot of safety mechanisms that help not only with cybersecurity, but with other areas of uh, your business, too. So it's not just for that. Yeah, that's confidential cool. information, accounting. Does everybody need access to the salary information for all the employees? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. So thinking along those lines. OK, so our next question is going to be, so how can I reduce my scope and preparation for CMMC assessment? You kind of just touched on this a little bit, but let's just expound on it a bit. OK, so you want to minimize least privilege. You, you touched on that. Who really needs to have access? It's probably not 50,000 people in your organization or if you're a small business up to um, 250, maybe you have. 10 key employees that deal with government contracting information. Now, other people might be uh, assigned to roles that actually implement it, but they don't need to know what's in the contract information, right? So you, you reduce your scope by preparing to identify key roles and personnel that need to have access so that you can minimize that footprint, that security footprint. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to save you more money, too, by shrinking that down, because then you're not going to necessarily have to apply the security measures that you will for the specifics of the CMMC audit. OK, right. our next question. So what value does a network diagram have in scope for an assessment? And before we even get into this, can you just explain a little bit what a network diagram is for people that may not know what that is? Sure. A network diagram basically comes through and says, OK, here's my connection to the Internet. Um, here's my firewall, and from the back of my firewall, I have connections that go to these main offices and or floors in a building through networking switches, and what departments are covered by each of those devices. 
Now, Perfect. it can be block diagrams or it can be detailed maps, but a lot of people don't have detailed maps. But even a block diagram is essential in having a diagram for your scope in your assessment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as far as being able to look at it and seeing everything laid out, right? So talk about some of the advantages of, be, of being able to look at something written down versus just going through your head and saying, okay, so yeah, this, 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 and this, this. It's, just, it's easier for collaboration, but go ahead. It is easier for collaboration. It's easier for your facilities officer to say, look, this is the department that works with government contracting. It's not HR. It's not payroll. It's not sales. Maybe it's government sales, but that's a separate sub entity. And perhaps their grouping is supported by the other professionals that are working with the government contracts. And if you can show that their scope or their vision for this, this information is limited to that category or that group of people, then everything else is out of scope which puts that smaller group of people, smaller group of devices, smaller network segment in scope for the assessment. Like you said, saving you time, saving you money, saving you policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. And I think that that diagram is definitely going to help, especially if you're really just starting to get into this, like, oh my goodness, what do we need to have uh, our eyes on? What do we not need to have our eyes on as far as the CMMC audit goes? That that diagram is going to be going to be helpful. So now our next question related to the diagram is, so how detailed does it need to be? Well, again, starting with a block diagram is essential, Okay. You need to know what departments go into what major categories of devices. Maybe you have um, routing switches and those routing switches then delegate to sub switches that go into different departments. All right. But who has access to those departments? Is it all on one single network or is it isolated to that department having access to only their information? Maybe there's a group of database servers and web servers and mail servers that everybody has resources and access to. So you want to have some kind of um, diagram that indicates their connectivity and who has access to that information. Are you having a hard time finding new customers? A lot of folks just like you in the IT and cybersecurity space are in the same situation and they have embraced a new opportunity to get new clients. They're doing this by growing their online presence and maximizing the power of LinkedIn. How, you ask? I have a tried and tested method called my cyber social program. I myself have been on LinkedIn and now have over 3.5 million LinkedIn views. And over on YouTube, I have over 750,000 video views. So I can show you exactly how I have done that so that you can promote your organization and become the authority in your industry. And the best part is I've done all of this organically without one paid ad. You don't need to waste your money over on Google with pay-per-click ads. Now's the time to establish yourself. Look around, the competition isn't doing it. This is your time to shine online before they do. So if you're ready to start your online journey and future-proof your business, please, down below, click the link and schedule a time for us to have a 45-minute call where I can review the exact methodology of the Cyber Social Program. You can also click below to see some of my masterclasses, which will give you quick little snippets of a couple of things you can do right away on LinkedIn that will help with your profile. I hope to see you and hear from you soon. Now, the more detail you have, of course, that's going to help the IT department and the cyber department determine what controls need to go where. But starting with a block diagram should get you the essential components where you can get a good start and then fill in details as you're in those different departments. And I think that that may also help too when you are having an assessment, if you can say, okay, here's our diagrams where we show everybody has access to this, this network for, like you said, for email server, for example, and then here's stuff that's just CMMC related. So then not only just the flow of information, the, the separate networks that you could show them. And then if they want to dig in a little bit deeper, they can, as opposed to just coming in there and not having something to look at and saying, well, what about email? And then you're starting to explain things. So again, it's making it easier to kind of, you know, break down. So Anyway, okay, so what are VLANs and how will they reduce my scope or visibility? 
VLANs are virtual LANs. So in developing your network diagram, you're going to have connecting lines between the boxes or the organizations. And we'll call that just a, a regular network connection. But perhaps those regular network connections also host virtual LAN connections, which identify resources like for the administration staff, for the HR staff, or the payroll, or sales. And they work on specific virtual LANs, which have access to resources that everybody else does, and or maybe partitions specific containers in those areas so that only those VLANs have access to it and not everybody else. So okay. a virtual LAN is a way to partition your network to exclude visibility by groups that do not need it. Okay, so would you say you would have that versus having separate networks? You would have a VLAN on one network that you would still be able to divide where certain people could have access versus having it on a totally different network so that you would know who has different access. Am I explaining that correctly? It, yeah. Yes, you're, you're explaining it correctly. It might be easier to have different networks, but you also have to have different resources since not everybody will need to have access to that environment, except for the people that, that do need it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can share resources in any way, shape, or form, then a VLAN would be the way to do that, but not provide connectivity from outside um, departments into your virtual LAN. Okay. It's a All way right. to create a new LAN, but virtually. Okay. So do you want to touch on any more on how that would reduce the scope or the visibility, maybe specifically for like a CMMC assessment? Sure. By showing that you're using virtual LANs, you've isolated the departments that have access from those that do not need access, thus reducing your scope and visibility to the rest of the organization. Okay. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So here's one. I was told that I have a flat network. How do I better protect my organization? So let's also make sure we explain what a flat network is. A flat network is real easy. You come from the internet connection into your building and everybody has access to the same thing. As a matter of fact, when you do a ping broadcast to the main router, it pings everybody. And we can do this and it's called like the ping of death where, you know, everybody gets super saturated with pings, especially if more than one device is doing it. But that's probably a really bad thing to do because now the attackers, when they're trying to identify resources in the environment, see every piece of equipment around because it's all one network. It's, there's no VLANs. There's no isolation for departments. And they can communicate with, your active destroyer or active directory server um, with all the passwords in it, um, the database server, the mail services, the web servers, and anything that had confidential information is available to everyone. That's not a good way to run an organization with a flat network. Okay. So how, what do you do to not have a flat network? Well, you go back to the concept that not everybody needs to be in the same environment. And, you know, you have departments in an organization because not everybody needs to know the salary for every employee. It's just the HR or the payroll team that needs to have that information. Or the executives have information about how the company's running and the profit and loss statements. But, you know, the janitorial staff certainly doesn't need access to that. And neither does the um, receptionist at the front desk. You know, having their systems compromised gives them direct access to that information. So separating these different departments on a network and organizing the network so that it's multi-segmented, um, has different network segments, or at least different virtual LANs, um, provides better security, control, and um, protection for the organization. Okay. 
Well, that sounds like a much better option <laughs> than, a, than a flat network. All right. Well, this was fabulous. Is there anything else you want to throw out there before we before we hop off this call? Um, it's good to start your pre-assessment process with a registered practitioner or a consultant to make sure that you have all the artifacts that you're going to need for this assessment to um, be given. And the sooner that you get these artifacts and activities straightened out, uh, the better off you are at passing the assessment in the first round, because you actually have to show that you've employed this and you've embodied these changes in the organization for you to get credit for using it in your assessment. Mm -hmm. And the sooner you get started, the easier it's going to be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to keep shouting from the rooftops this year to everybody. But, well, thank you very, very well, much for you your know, time. It's hard. When the genie gets out of the bottle, he doesn't want to go back in. No. And when the data is out of your network, can you really get it back? I mean, anyone that believes that paying for the ransom to a ransomware attacker is going to get their data back is really sticking their head in the sand because they already got your data and they're selling it already. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you are dealing with a criminal. So <laughs> the trust factor is the bar is pretty low. <laughs> that screams volumes by itself, Dana. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Well, thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate this, Albert. And hopefully you'll come back on and we can talk about something else new and exciting. I'd be, it'd be my extreme pleasure. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your time and thank you everybody for watching and we will see you on the next episode. Until then, bye-bye. Bye now.